Hey guys, Dan here from DanceTube.tv and today I have my one year review of the Mavic Pro. So I've successfully logged over 300 flights, I've used the Mavic Pro for over a year now and I have lots of different experiences and thoughts to share with you guys. You can pick up the Mavic Pro right now on Amazon for just over $1,000. It's $1,093. It's cheaper than it's ever been. I will have the link in the description below. And I will also have a link to my six month review if you'd like to see my thoughts back then and see how they compare to right now, one year later. Let me start off by telling you that I still love the Mavic Pro just as much as the first day that I took it out of the box. This piece of technology is fantastic, marvelous, mind blowing, and something that I just can't put down. I always try to find an excuse to go for a flight and DJI have done a fantastic job with their aftermarket care. They have been adding regular updates to the Mavic, new features, new UI updates and bug fixes as well and that seems to be a regular thing as well as software updates. Now let me share some of my experiences with this tiny little drone here and maybe shed a little bit more light on the overall experience with the Mavic Pro. So the first thing is the focusing system. Now this can be a little bit annoying and for a first time user it does take a little bit of getting used Used to it has become second nature to me now but basically what you have to do is you have to tap on the screen to focus in on a subject when you take off it's normally advised that you focus it will not automatically focus straight away a lot of the time the image will be a little bit limited in its sharpness the focus point will be completely off and the image just does not look fantastic so you need to make sure that you focus in so that's something that's become second nature to me every time i take off with the mavic pro i focus in and then normally for the majority of my flight i have no issues i have got into the routine of every time i start a new recording i will focus again to make sure that everything's fine but besides that the focusing system is fine it's just a little bit of getting used to when it comes to tapping on the screen or the focus button another thing Thing I was a little bit nervous about when I initially picked up the Mavic Pro was the folding mechanism. I was just curious if folding and unfolding and opening and closing the Mavic Pro continuously would start to put a bit of wear and tear on the arms, but I can confirm that after a year of using this drone with over 300 flights, it's still just as smooth and just as stable and reliable as the first time I unfolded this little drone here. So that mechanism has been perfected. It really works well and it feels like it's not gonna give in anytime soon. I almost had a perfect year with the Mavic without any sort of issues arising. That was until recently when I actually had some issues with the visual positioning system or VPS. So what I actually did was I disabled VPS to allow me to hand catch and hand launch the Mavic Pro, which I don't necessarily recommend. It's quite a big drone, quite awkward to do. And unless you have a specific reason to do that, maybe from a boat or something, then it's something that you should probably stay clear of. Seeing as the visual positioning system is an added element of security or safety when it comes to the flight. But what basically happened was I disabled this, uh, everything worked well when I hand launched and caught the actual Mavic itself, but then what happened was I landed the Mavic and then tried to take off normally, and my VPS reading, my actual height reading, was fluctuating between 0.1 meters and 0.0 meters. So the Mavic was thinking that it was on the floor even though it was hovering at about one meter. So it actually started lifting off on its own without me doing anything, without any sort of user input. And it was terrifying because I was actually underneath the shed as I was hovering to try to get a video for my YouTube channel and it automatically started lifting up. And that terrified me. I looked online and apparently this was quite a common issue. A lot of people had this issue when they disabled VPS and then enabled it. So. That was something that I actually regretted doing. I never wanted to disable it, but it was a little test I was doing with my Mavic Pro and it actually created an error. So what I decided to do was I actually recalibrated the VPS. Now, let me tell you, that was probably the biggest pain in the ooh, wink wink. And it was really frustrating, guys. Literally, you had to set your Mavic up, plug it into a cable and then use your monitor to align the VPS. The problem with that though is the cable that they supplied is tiny and I was really struggling because they tell you to pull the Mavic away further from the monitor and the cable just doesn't give you enough room to do that. It doesn't give you sufficient room. So it was the most awkward calibration process I've ever experienced for any sort of technology, which was crazy. But after that happened and after I finally got it all sorted, I haven't had that issue arise once since then. So it's definitely fixed that issue and the Mavic has been fine since then. 
then, but that was probably the biggest, most terrifying issue I had. Another issue I did have was with my battery. It was my second battery, and for some reason, the lights were flashing in a really weird sequence. And I did a bit of research. People were saying that it could be a dead cell. Uh, you could have some issues with the battery, maybe send it back. Um, but I actually tested a few things. I plugged it into my Mavic and turned it on to give it a bit of power to see if the different cells had similar volt outputs to see if everything was fine or if it, a cell was maybe damaged. And nothing came up that really raised any sort of red flags. So I actually got it working after that. I plugged it back into my charging unit and everything was fine. Um, but besides those two issues, pretty much everything has been problem free with my Mavic Pro. Another thing that I noticed, which isn't maybe an issue, but just something to be mindful of, if I was flying my Mavic Pro next to a friend that had a Mavic Pro as well, then it would actually come up with a low frequency warning. That was only if we were standing too close to each other or sitting too close to each other. So the way to fix that is just basically stand away from each other, make sure that you communicate your heights um, so that you're obviously not gonna hit into each other. Make sure you're flying in different directions so that frequencies don't overlap or cross over each other. And after we kind of changed that or revised that, we haven't had any issues with the low frequency. There is a warning message that seems to come up every single time I go for a flight, and it just comes up with high wind velocity, and that seems to just happen regardless of how windy the day is. So it's a basic warning, and it's just letting you know that it is a little bit windy, the footage is still extremely stable, and the Mavic can handle wind conditions a lot higher than the days I've actually flown on. I always check a wind compass, and I know that the Mavic can handle a lot more than 20k winds, so I'm always very mindful of that, but yet you still get this high wind velocity every single time you fly, um, and that's something that does become annoying. It actually um, intrudes a little bit on the screen real estate. It pops up, and you have to cross it every single time. Luckily, it doesn't spam you, but it just seems to be a regular occurrence that is kind of annoying and it'd be handy if I could just turn that off because I know that it's windy up there it's it's a tiny drone flying in the air with nothing to block the wind of, of course it's windy another thing that I try to steer clear of is shooting in 1080p every time I've shot in 1080p I have not been hundred percent satisfied with the image it's just not sharp enough for my liking there's not enough detail in the image and Every single time I've shot in 4K, I've been extremely happy with it. So just my recommendation is shoot in 4K regardless. It looks amazing. And then if you really want, you can edit it in 1080p. And it just gives you a little bit more room to edit it, a little bit more room to crop and zoom the image in. And overall, just the 1080p image was not that fantastic in my opinion. But hey, it's just me being picky, I guess. You probably all don't know this, but I'm actually a qualified drone pilot now. I've gone through my Cert 3 in aviation, and I've learned quite a lot about the safety processes and the risk assessment when it comes to flying your drone. And one thing that I recommend to all pilots is just making sure that the motors and the battery is 100% operating and not overheating. And the best way to do that is always test your motors. Make sure they're meant to be brushless motors, so make sure there's no friction, make sure there's no loose ball bearings or anything like that. If you hear any sort of friction in any motor, then do not take off at all. You need to get that motor fixed. Um, at any point, it could fail and the drone will fall and could hurt someone. So you've always got to test those motors. Um, a really good way to do that as well is you have a very short flight for a few minutes, very close to you. You just kind of hover there, fly a little bit, and then you land and you feel the temperature of the motors. If they're all similar temperatures, that's fine. You just want to make sure that one motor isn't working harder than the other, which will happen at times, but it shouldn't be um, drastically hotter than the others. And also make sure that the battery doesn't get extremely hot as well. Make sure that the battery is always clipped in. Make sure you hear that sound when you hit the battery on. Make sure it's clipped in 100%, because again, that is just a problem waiting to happen if it's not 100% fixed in. Um, but when it comes to the motors, make sure you spin them. They should just be freely spinning, and the blades should just spin around without any sort of friction. Like I mentioned, land make sure the motors aren't too hot and then you're ready to go and then that is basically a quick and easy step to ensure that the motors aren't overheating that the battery is not going to overheat that you're having no issues with the cells in the battery itself and that the brushless motors aren't kind of interacting or contacting any sort of surface inside the motor itself like I said it's ball bearings it's a system that 
is not meant to have any sort of friction, so if you feel that, then that's just a word of warning. Another really crucial thing to do is make sure that you have downloaded apps to check magnetology. You need to see the magnetology level, see if there's any sort of solar flares that are going to occur, or if it's not a safe condition to fly in. You also need to check the weather, of course, to see if it's windy, uh, make sure that the winds aren't extremely fierce, make sure that obviously there's no rain or anything. Another thing is make sure that you follow the government's rules. Whatever country you live in, make sure you follow those rules. Uh, in my country, it's you have to be 30 meters away from people, no higher than 120 meters, and there's a few other rules as well, but they're the crucial ones to be mindful of. Make sure you're just being careful and not intruding on people's privacy. Um, there are apps out there to check if it's also safe to fly in the area. Uh, if there's an aerodrome there, whether that's a heli pad or whether there's an airport or whatever, you need to make sure that you're outside of those aerodromes or basically following the rules, whatever has been set in your country. Um, the apps in Australia are called Is It Safe To Fly There? Um, I think there's also Safe To Fly, so just type in those keywords into your app store and see if you can find something relevant to your country. Uh, wind conditions, like I mentioned, very important. You can get apps for that. There's heaps of wind compasses. And again, just make sure that you follow the government rules. Make sure that you actually check them online. And I also recommend registering your drone. You might as well. You really want to be careful and make sure that you are mindful of people around you because this is not a toy. This could actually really hurt someone, so you need to be very careful and very safe when you're flying. When it comes to color profiles that I recommend shooting in, D-Log 100% of the way if you want to get some really professional stuff. It's a very flat image and it allows you to play around with the image a lot more in post-production. Everything comes out extremely nicely and quite flat, so then you can play around with the colors then later on, which is really, really handy and the image seems to come out perfectly every time. Another thing I would recommend is D sin like that's probably my favorite color profile to shoot in um, it just seems to grade it really nicely and the image just comes out nice straight away when you chuck it on the computer um, one thing I would like to mention though is the Mavic Pro seems to overexpose a lot of shots you normally have to play around with the EV or the exposure and get that image a little bit more natural because a lot of the time you will get those really harsh white colors coming through and it's extremely overexposed which just looks terrible so when you shoot in D log you don't get that normally as long as you play around with the settings and make sure that you're not getting just a bombardment of white color and that is quite easy to edit D-Log like I mentioned uh, you just play around with the profile d -sin like is probably my favorite just nice and easy chuck it in and that doesn't seem to overexpose the image too much and you also just have the normal color profile which is quite impressive as well um, but there are a lot of other like artistic ones on there and a lot of other like highly graded ones whether they're extremely saturated or maybe less overexposed those are interesting to play around with but from my experiences D-Log and d -sin like are the way to go now when it comes to accessories that I recommend. I picked up a range extender and that's purely just for peace of mind, just so I know that I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that I don't lose signal to my drone. That I would recommend picking up. I'd also recommend picking up some sort of carrying bag or some sort of um, briefcase or something to actually transport the Mavic Pro. Another really handy thing is grabbing the additional batteries, which you get with the Fly More Combo, so definitely recommend the Fly More Combo, which is only a, just over $1,000 on Amazon right now, uh, and that includes the shoulder bag, the props, car charger, and two extra batteries. Uh, I'd also recommend a sun visor or a sun shade. They work really well, and there's definitely been a few times where I've been in direct sunlight, and that has helped quite a lot. ND filters are also quite a nice thing to cut down on the overexposure. Um, that's really easy to pick up, relatively cheap, and then probably just a camera cover, so something to actually hold the camera in place when you're transporting your Mavic. Again, another really handy accessory that has definitely saved my camera and my gimbal a lot of wear and tear. Overall though, the Mavic Pro has just been a dream. It is such an amazing piece of technology. I've had amazing flights with it. I've enjoyed every minute of owning this little piece of technology, and I've just been impressed with what it can produce, how portable it is, how easy it is to use, um, how reliable and diverse and robust it is. There's just so much packed into this tiny little drone. Super portable, a perfect travel drone, and something that 
I've invested a lot of time into. Yes, it's expensive, but if you make the time to fly this thing and follow the rules, be safe, then this is a really enjoyable hobby to invest some time into. It's extremely peaceful, it's a mindful exercise that I can enjoy any time during the day, and honestly, this is something that you cannot knock until you've tried. It's a very freeing thing. I know that sounds weird, but it's just amazing to fly a drone that you can 100% trust. I trust this thing in any situation I've chucked it in. It's been a 100% reliable, the footage always comes out nice, I'm happy with all of the different flight modes, I'm happy with how durable this thing has been, and honestly the Mavic Pro is amazing. I'd love to know what you think in the comments below, let me know if you own a Mavic Pro, let me know if you're thinking about picking one up. This is something that I'm really passionate about and I'd love to know how you guys feel about drones, maybe the community as a whole, and the Mavic Pro specifically. So thank you so much for watching, make sure to have a fantastic day, and peace out!